In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of the faithful, and I can and ask the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and they shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, did instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. God our Heavenly Father, as we study your word this morning, grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you once again for joining in our channel. My name is Father Evaristus Abu, and I present to you today the Liturgy of the Word. Today is Wednesday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. Our first reading today is taken from the second books of Kings, chapter 2, verse 1, chapter, uh, verse 6 to 14. Second Kings, chapter 2, verse 1, verse 6 to 14. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a wild wind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. They came to Jericho, and Elijah said to Elisha, Carry here, I beg you, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you leave yourself, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as the boats were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his coat and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, I beg you, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by the whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces, and he took up the coat of Elijah that had fallen from him, and he went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the coat of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, be strong. Let your heart take courage. All who hope in the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. All who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you, that you show to those who trust you in the sight of the children of men. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. 
You hide them in the shelter of your presence, secure from human scheming. You keep them safe within your tent from disputing tongues. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord God is faithful, but the Lord will repay all to the fool, the one who acts with pride. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Sing alleluia, amen. Sing alleluia, amen. Glory be to God, oh, sing alleluia, amen. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Glory be to God, oh, sing alleluia, amen. Sing alleluia, sing alleluia. Glory be to God, oh, sing alleluia, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 6, verse 16 to 18. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before men in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give alms, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your arms may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret, will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. My dear friends in Christ, in today's first reading, we saw the handover of Elijah to Elisha. Elisha requested for a double portion of Elijah's anointing. And Elijah said, if you see me taking up from you, then you will receive it. And as they walked along, there was a chariot of fire, a chariot of horses, and it took Elijah from the sight of Elisha. Thank God, Elisha actually saw Elijah taken away and he received his mantle. When he put on that mantle, he tore his own and received the double portion of the, the anointing or the spirit of Elijah. So many lessons from this passage. 
it is always and it should always be the desire of parents to see that their children are better than them. It should always be your desire as a father or as a mother to see that your children do better than you in life. And so, you must ensure that your children are well brought up to know God, to love God, to serve God. Never be afraid of disciplining your children. Never be afraid of telling them the truth. Because if they are not disciplined, there is no way they can achieve greatness in life. Some parents will say, I don't want my children to suffer. I don't want my children to suffer. In a bid to shield your children from suffering, you actually expose them to a greater suffering if they lack discipline, if they lack the fear of God. Again, as a director in your office or in whatever post, whatever position you find yourself, you know you're not going to be there forever. Ensure that you make provision for your successor so that your successor doesn't have to suffer what you suffered so that your successor will not be starting all over again. It should be your greatest dream or your joy to see that the person who has taken over from you in that office, in that business, in that department, you know, is doing better than you. Ensure you leave structures on ground. Train the future. Train the future. Train a successor. They say success without a successor is failure. Train someone who can take over from you. The problem we find find today, even amongst ministers of God, is that we don't want to train our successor. We don't believe that we are ever going to hand over to anyone else. How old was Elijah when he handed over to Elisha? Sometimes we are so stingy with this anointing you see, this anointing that <laughs> Elijah gave to Elisha, sometimes we could be so stingy with it. Sometimes we could get so puffed up with pride that we don't want the younger ones to even attempt to do or to assist us in what we are doing. It's just me, me, myself, and I, and I alone. Nobody, nobody should come and try to take my glory. Nobody should, nobody should, should, should attempt to, to, to do what I'm doing. That particular program is for me. That service is for, I am in charge here. And this is what is bringing about the breaking away and the further breaking away and the division upon division upon division in the Christian church today. See, churches are springing up every year, year and year just because there are no structures for handing over no structures for success it is like one man show one man show everywhere one man show no 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 assistance no support no encouragement no training no investment in the future invest in the future invest in your successor let your successor have a double portion of your anointing. Let your successor have a double portion of your anointing. Also, in the same way, as much as it is our responsibility to see that we train our successor, it should also be our responsibility to try to take over from our elders. Mind you, it was Elisha who made the request that I want to have a double portion of your anointing. We need, you need a mentor. We all need to have mentors. We all need to have people that we, we aspire to be like them. 
You can never be a successor of someone if you distance yourself from the person. If you do not offer yourself to serve. If you do not serve, you can never be a master. If you are not willing to learn. If you are not willing to suffer, if you are not willing to take instructions, you will not be in a position to give instructions. If you cannot obey instruction, you will never get to a position where you will be the one issuing out instructions. If you do not associate with a master and serve him, humble yourself as a servant, you can never be a master. You need to humble yourself now. Because the scripture says, when you humble yourself, God will exalt you. God will lift you up. God will lift you up. We need to learn how to play second fiddle. We need to learn how to serve with all diligence. Especially when the person we are serving, we have seen that this person is worthy of emulation. Of course, we do not blame the, the fact that we live in a world where there are not many role models anymore. You get close to someone and you discover that the person is not what he or she says he, he is. So this person is on TV, is everywhere, and people are clapping for him, people are hailing him. But when you go and live with the person, you discover that the person is a demon. That the person is not who people think he or she is. And this is this brings us to our gospel passage of today. When Jesus Christ is talking about you know deception, deception, pretense amongst Christians today. I service, I service, I service. We 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 think we think it is God that we are offering offering service to. When we do things just to just to give people the impression that we are good, but we are not good. We just to give people the impression we are so concerned about television, we are concerned about about what people we see, what people we say about us. We if, if 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 your religion or if your Christianity is all about what people we say about you, then your Christianity is just mere publicity. It is not you are not offering service to God, rather you are offering service to your own ego. To your pride. It is not to God. Everything you do, people must hear. If you want to give arms, everybody must hear. You will call ITV, call EBS, call NTA, call AIT, call, call this one, call channels. Everybody should come and see that you are giving out arms. Jesus Christ said, such, you, it does not please God. You, you will not receive any reward from God. The reward you will get is the reward from people. And unfortunately, a vast majority of Christians today, they are not worshipping God. Rather, they are just doing eye service. Eye service. When Jesus Christ was encountered, when Jesus Christ encountered the Samaritan woman, Jesus Christ said to her that the time will come when true believers will worship me in spirit and in truth. This is the kind of worship that God seeks. The worship in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4 verses 23 to 24. Sincere worship. Sincere worship. Worshipping God not because people are watching you. Not so that people will write something good about you. Not so that television and radio will talk about you, but because you know it is good. The fear of God is in your heart. Do you know, do you know the, the funny thing is that sometimes we think we can actually deceive people. Or, or let me say, we think it is God that we deceive when we, when we live pretentious lives as Christians. God is spirit. God is spirit is, is not a human being that can be deceived. You know, you know, and, and, and the funny thing is that we cannot really deceive human beings. So. Because no matter how, how good you are in pretense, eh, people will always see through. 
they will see through you how much you try try to to pretend you know try to give the impression people will still catch you you know how it feels when you when you get close to someone because you feel that this person is good only for you to discover that the person is just <laughs> it's just a fake and you're like oh i thought i thought you were even someone to be to to reckon with i didn't know that you were just you know an actor how much more if if human beings have a way of detecting pretense someone someone claims to be your friend and over time you get to discover that this friendship is not genuine if if human beings can detect pretense how much more god god who sees everything and knows everything from whom nothing can be hidden the psalmist will say to us oh lord you have searched me and known me you know when i sit down and when i rise up you descend my thoughts from afar even before a word is on my tongue oh lord you know it completely psalm 139 verse 1 to 4. Hmm. Nothing is hidden from God. Though. Even before the word is on your mouth, be be before I, I, I know what to say, God already knows what I'm going to say. So why, why do we try to, to behave as if God is not seeing us? Why do we pretend? Why do we pretend? Why do we offer to God lip service? Jesus is telling us today that we should repent. We should repent. We should stop living life just to attract the good opinions of others. We should not be doing things just because people are watching. Be good in secret. Whether in secret or whether in the open, be good everywhere. Snap out of this pretentious life. Snap out of it. Jesus wants us today to replace people-centered worship with God-centered worship. To replace eye service with God service. To become secretive with good deeds rather than evil deeds. We don't have to announce goodness before people to be rated highly by them. But we must ensure that the things we do in secret attract the loudest applause of God. May God bless his words in our hearts and may the spirit of Elijah come down in a double fold upon every one of us. May we live good Christian lives. May we continue to inspire others as they come closer to God every day. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. Thanks for listening. God bless you.